Welcome back, attractive and well-educated watchers, to a brand new episode of The Frontier. Last time we left off, Olek dealt the killing blow to the Chaos Orb of Death. And uh, the party got stuck in a uh, totally original, made-by-shy board game, Do Not Steal. Uh, so so uh, today, everything is done. The Rabatars have taken hold of the university as their own property, and the party is healed up, and Olek has gotten a lot of curses removed from him. But we're sure, you know, you can you can hear about that later. So everybody, feel free to introduce yourselves. I'm Anasis Skyrider, currently fighting off a cold, playing Aldous Ronin, the human armor artificer. What, that 20 constitution didn't keep you from getting sick? Believe it or not, <laughs> character stats don't translate to real life in a role-playing game. Damn this thing. I am uh, Adam. I'm playing uh, Torner Fire Strike, the Circle of Wildfire Dwarven Druid. We'll be right back. Um, Keep introducing yourselves. I'm Flicker playing Calden the Plate Singer. Mm, I'm playing Oleg the Chris Dublin. I already messed up my set. My lines. I'm, I'm just Oleg. I'm just Oleg. If you don't know Oleg by now, you're gonna find out. I'm just being Oleg. Come on, then. Nah. <laughs> and I am Seth Gatomia. I play an Arrow Coulter, Druid of Land, and Requisite Group Furry. Alright, that's, uh, we got back just in time. <laughs> and, don't, and don't forget Tri Kekis' silent introduction as he quietly watches our game in the background. The background yeah. DM who takes responsibility for everything that ends well and denies responsibility for anything that goes poorly. I didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, we have a bit of block text uh, before we do a somewhat more tame episode today, hopefully. <clears throat> After a few days of clearing out and cleaning up the old university, the Rabatars set up their homes and settle as in, eh, and settle in as the new keepers of this grand location. Dubbed Warren Arsenal University and given the motto "Fight with the Fists of Knowledge," the Rabatars are quickly repairing and fortifying the area, claiming custodianship over everything from the internal sanctuary of the Tuberkith to the outer hills of the Titan Shires. As you recover from your arduous combat with the Viscount of Discernment. Aldous discovers that damage to the orb that you did uh, that the damage to the orb that you did was far worse than previously suspected. You may need to return with this orb immediately, or all of your work might be for naught. Fortunately, still not fully grown from the wildfire some months ago, the trip back will be surprisingly fast, and the Rabatars will escort you alongside many wagons and glorious transportation, but it will take extra time and you will have to rely on the people of Mountain Home to bring the newly upgraded machine goddess back to Crypt Canyon after they repair her. But that will use valuable time and effort. However, you know that Mountain Home is a place of many great and powerful relics from a bygone era, of magics long forgotten. Perhaps with some exploration and or hard work, you could find a way back toward the edges of reality quickly. All the same, you have a long road ahead of you, either way, and after the last few weeks, it is good to have some time to relax and talk amongst yourselves about what you want to do. The Rabatars are ready and able to do business with you now, and you can find many amenities unavailable in the frontier through their many specialists and craft bunnies. Bam! Go ahead, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are, you are wherever the heck you want to be, but the map will be shown as Yamington Farm because it's a great place to be. Me, mm. truly, truly wonderful. So. I suppose that wildfire is going to bite us in the ass here because there'd be no trees that druids would have seen. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the ones that tried to kill us. Are you talking about the wildfire from when we had to deal with the swarm of yes. planet monsters? Yep. We are exactly I'm, I'm, talking I'm about that wildfire, that we could, yeah. We could circumvent all of the travel time by using transport via plants, except that there's no fucking trees anymore. Right, well, because Torner <laughs> caught everything on fire. <laughs> well, it's not like Mountain Home got caught on fire. It kind of oh, almost did, remember. Oh, I, yeah, that's why I said, oh, wait. <laughs> In fact, a... it, it definitely did, it just not from that fire. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we wouldn't want to transport into 
I, I, I have or whatever they nothing were. to do with this. It was clearly some magical chaos. <laughs> <to> the, yeah. <laughs> it was a curse. It was cursed. Yeah. He's gotten yeah, rid yeah, of those yeah. now. There was an evil thing <laughs> whispering in his ear. Yeah. Clearly. It's funny because there actually was at the time. There was indeed. <laughs> uh, Thanks so. you. <laughs> hey, she took care of that bitch. Yeah, she did. It's one of the few things she's mm -hmm. done well for the party that you acknowledge. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, talk amongst yourselves. What do you want to do? You have the broken orb and the intact casing and the machine goddess, which you can pick up and move wherever the heck you want. She can be unplugged. Right. Well, my goal is to go repair it at Mountain Home, so that's pretty much the only thing I want to do is get to Mountain Home as quick as possible. All right. I, I could have swore we were on a warpath with the grit lady in gray. Yeah. Do we really have time for this detour? That is the question, is it not? That's mm. that's what you guys have to dis have to have to consider amongst yourselves. <clears throat> you thought you had time for the orb to be just fine, and that would solve up you know one of your largest quests. But now it looks like the damage is worse than you thought, and you might have to get it repaired sooner. Do you have the time? Mm. Worst what case scenarios, we take it to Mountain Home, get it repaired. They hold on to it for a while, and we head back. How about Do we, we have send the time you? for that? How about we send you? And the rest of us moves on and gets this great lady and just rips her head off. <laughs> Can you afford to take on the edge of reality without all Anas or Aldis? Well, you see, Aldis will not be focused on taking down the edge of reality because he's way too busy with his little tech project there. So no matter if he's there or not, he will not be much help. Ooh, Ooh. Aldous! Shots fired! Are you gonna take that? <laughs> no, that is absolutely not true. Despite, the, despite how imperative this project is, that wouldn't stop me from doing what needs to be done. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was savage. You said uh, oh, right, I, hardcore. I I need to I need to ask. Uh, what do you value more, all this? Um, the lives of those uh, people in the in the room, in the computer room, or uh, the lives of the world? I choose both. I don't. I don't know if that's an option here. Well, do we actually do we actually know how long it would take to get to Mountain Home and back? Uh, weren't we traveling for like two weeks? Through dense forest and shit like that, though. So it will take less time to get there. Yeah, the, the way to mountain you know, is more or less it's... open. You know, there was... Did anybody get that? You know, there once was an old druid named Kirk who didn't believe in the area. There once was an old druid named Kirk who didn't believe in what? Back to the mute. I think no win scenario. Ah. And no yeah. win. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was no win scenarios, yeah. So, so wait a second. Does that mean we have two votes to go to Mountain Home and two votes to go to, to, to carry on the warpath? Ooh. Wait, who's the one left? Is it Nara on the tiebreaker? <laughs> Oh, oh shit, no. dog. <laughs> oh, Naro has to make a decision. It falls upon <laughs> the queen. Hey, guys, I guess I guess we should, like, you know, take hiatus for, like, an hour of all <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Naro over here writing out spreadsheets <laughs> for the pros and cons. I, did I, I, did, did I hear that the, that the wildfire means that the way to Mountain Home will be faster than the way that we came originally? Yes. Yes, because the, tr the the woods are just sparse woodland right now. Much easier to traverse than the heavy forests that you guys have been going through. But... So it'll take much less but, than about four weeks. But... But it also means that we leave behind what we're coming for and allow the enemy to regroup. This is true. Olek, Olek's making a point, guys. Well, how, here, here's my question. How much do we actually need to take with us to Mountain Home? We just need to take the orb to get it prepared, right? 
Well, you gotta you probably should take the machine goddess and the orb in its casing and all that. But again, you will be escorted by the Rabbitars with glorious transportation. All right, because what I was thinking is, you know, we could go to Mountain Home and then, you know, leave, leave some of our stuff here, like what we need to continue west here. And then once we get to Mountain Home, get the machine goddess and the orb all situated. We can transport via plants back to here to pick up where we left off with our supplies. Okay, but that implies, one, that the plant is still here. Two, that in the meantime, the stuff that we left behind and the people we left behind didn't get attacked and maybe like mauled and uh, decapitated everywhere. And it also implies that we are fast enough to return before uh, we get into trouble over here. We can totally see you guys in our mind's eye in Mr. Yammington's, like, farmhouse or whatever at the table eating some stew or what have you, talking this shit over, like, being super serious as characters. We love it. This is great. Thank you. <laughs> it'll take about two weeks on traveling through forests. It'll take us a, a fair bit less than that going to Mountain Home and then basically instantaneous back. The date for the record is November 3rd. Wait, wait, wait! Right. Didn't that wasn't that two weeks from home to here to forest? But mountain home was south of home. Wasn't it like southwest ish? Yes. Mountain home was almost directly south, actually. Oh, yeah, but but the the um, you guys have been going kind of north ish as you travel to the west. Uh, and and the, the wildfire spread considerably farther into the west because of the prevailing winds from the east than it did north. So you can cut down into the wildfire lands and then cross them to get to Mountain Home more or less pretty easily. And remember, after the wildfire, you could get to Mountain Home from, uh, from Crypt Canyon in just three days when it was a few weeks to get there through the forest. Me. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about, like, an order of magnitude less time sometimes, you know? Mm-hmm. I need to check something. Because <laughs> I'm wondering if there's something I can do with magic or items that would uh, boost the initial travel time. Well, I mean, if... If you had, like, if you all had Phantom Steeds called in style, and a well-marked, like, path or what have you, well, that'd be even better. Well, don't we, even we get issue, started on it if you had a river route going there. I mean, that would get, boom, <laughs> you know, all the way. The issue of yeah, if there was a river, we could do water walk and go no, and just... No, if, if there was a river, you could just get on, like, a boat. Or, you know, like, get on, like, some concave piece of wood or whatever, and then your travel time is functionally 24-7. You just travel with the yeah. flow of the river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except, that, wasn't that Mountain Home on a mountain? It was, but it had a river oh, flowing the, into the water... it, remember? Oh, it's going in. Yeah, yeah, it, wouldn't that mean that a... the water's going away from it? Huh? <laughs> No, no, remember Mountain Home had a, had a river that was artificially redirected into it. Yeah, we it, used water walk to get into the Mountain Home. Yeah, and you used water walk to get into the underground, into the undercity for yeah. Mountain Home, so yeah. Hmm. What I'm trying to figure out is can I do something with fly and or um, the, the boots of flying to in some way expedite this, but the problem is that we need to get a cart with a heavy machine goddess on it through where we're traveling, not just walking something, not, not just flying something with a bag of holding. You know, what I find funny is that Addis is over there, so how do we best get there? Well, half of us is like, we don't get there. It's just hilarious. <laughs> Inaril hasn't made up made her vote yet. Well, the issue is thinking. that the well, the issue is the detour. So the la the the more time that we can save, the more reasonable that is. Could I use commune with nature to see if there are any rivers around here that go in that direction? Yes, we believe by right. definition you could actually terrain and bodies <laughs> of water. Yep, terrain and bodies of water. Uh, no. So I guess ten ten minute ritual to do commune with nature. Okay, sure. 
uh, you get three facts uh, about anything within three miles of you. So you want to know if there is a river that ends up flowing to Mountain Home. And since mm -hmm. we have or not, at least to... and since we have not thought about this at all, we are going to roll one d four for it. <laughs> yes, there is a river that goes directly for. All right. So, so there, there was for at least as far as you you can tell by nature, spirits telling you, yes, there is a river that goes directly there. All right. So it is very small. There extremely fast. We did not say it, 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 there is a river that goes directly there. That was the question. <laughs> <laughs> you have two more questions. Okay. Uh, about uh, about uh, knowledge of the land within three miles of you. Uh, one more fact. How fast does the water move? Can we try that one? <laughs> yeah. I could maybe figure out the size and speed of the river as well to see if it could even support the, the trip. All right. We will start. Okay. Which one are you asking? How fast does it move? Uh, let's start with size. Okay, how big is this river? Excellent question. We're going to roll a d10 for that. The river is big. All right, that's good. No Amazon or whatever, it... but definitely something that could support the machine goddess. How fast right. does this river go? Is that your last mm. question? Yep, that's the last question. It goes. We probably, we probably want a medium roll on the. It, it goes. It's a medium roll. It's a it's a perfect five. No rapids. Mm -hmm. No rapids. But you ain't no lazy river here. Good. Nice. Like uh, <laughs> like the Columbia. I was afraid of like we roll high. We're like yeah, it maybe, runs maybe. right there. It's a huge river. It also goes at like two <laughs> miles an hour. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, di I did just have a have a impromptu kind of world building. Maybe this area and Mountain Home used to have a trade route on the river. Maybe. Actually, it's entirely Maybe. likely. Yep, it would be a good location for such a thing. All right. So, NRL, are you are you after communing with the the spirits and aligning your chakras and stuff like that? Are you have you decided that you're going to uh, leave this cottage core nightmare back to Mountain Home or go to the west? <laughs> I think we could do the Mountain Home trip because you know, nice sized river, decent speed. We can we could definitely get there and with transport via plants. You know, we just get ourselves back here faster. Somebody will have to find a tree capable of bringing you... Oh, no, wait, you won't be bringing the machine goddess back. Yeah, okay, so it's fine. Yeah. And then, you know, once once we finish up with what we're doing, we can do transport via plants to get back to Mountain Home. All right, it's looking like it's, it's three to two here. Mountain, mountain Home it is, and you'll have to find a quick way to get back via transport plants or what have you. So I feel like uh, I, I, person I, 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 I have a question. Uh, are we wait, gonna are, are we gonna find a tree that we can return here to before we leave? Well, <laughs> yeah. the best the best thing about about the trees here and returning here is that you don't have to bring a whole ass machine goddess through a tree to get back. Yeah, but wouldn't we still need our carts and shit? Potentially. Are you gonna leave a bunch of stuff here if you're gonna come straight back? Yeah, we can leave we can leave our personal supplies here, you know, bring what we need to make the trip. And then, you know, transport back here and then just pick up where we left off. What does everybody think about that? So no, we're just leaving our we're leaving our stuff unguarded. What do you yeah, mean not unguarded? Exactly. Not un unguarded. We're gonna be leaving it with the, the with the rabbitars. How about the fact that I have a twentieth level cleric with me? But why don't you go with your 20 level? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, why don't you. you go with your 20 level cleric and a nice fancy boat and you guys have fun over there with the weird, you know, tower dwarf people. And the rest of us make sure that nothing gets, you know, burned to shit while you're gone. Olek is recommending uh? we split the party. <laughs> well, I mean, as long as... We... No, look, look. Actually, thinking about it, thinking about... Sorry. Can I make my 
Yeah, yeah. Here's Sorry. the thing. If we don't bring Oleg with us, he won't be able to crash the next airship we see. You're right. I vote Oleg stays. <laughs> Oleg. They probably don't. <laughs> Wait, but then who's watching Oleg? Me. Galden. I would like to cry on... You would like to what? <laughs> Did, can we? Did, can Drew do I would like to try on Pickle Beard and see how he's doing. We left him as like what an advisor, home or crowned him king of Mountain Home. We installed him. No, he's home. an advisor. Well, he's become the the high historian, but uh... and nice Drews do get scrying. just to see how he's doing. Okay, one moment. Let's look at what Scrum does. See here, particular creature you choose on the same plane as you. Target must make a wisdom save and throw, which is modified by how well you know the target and the sort of physical connection you have to it. Oh my god, the formatting your... of cancer. If it, it is, is not good at all. If the target knows you're casting this spell, it can the... fail the saving throw voluntarily if it wants to be observed. Five here you go. Hold on, let me hear one. <laughs> you... Uh... You they know the target well. So you get... He gets a plus, plus zero. Five. No, it's plus oh. five. Oh, okay, wait. okay, yeah. Wait, wait, no, sorry. Minus five save One modifier? Moment. We're just going to the... We're just... Oh, that's oh, so much better. It's you know the modifier. target well, so it's minus five. There we um, go. You don't have a picture of him. You don't have any of his possessions. So it's just minus five for his uh, save. Uh, what's your sad. what's your boy O? Oh? Uh you are successful. Uh so you create an invisible sensor within 10 feet of the target. You can see in here through the sensor as if it were there. Uh, sensor moves with the target remaining within 10 feet of it for the duration. A creature that can see invisible objects sees the sensor as a luminous orb about the size of your fist. Instead of targeting the creature, you can choose a location. You're targeting a creature, so that doesn't matter. All right. So you uh, you appear. Congratulations. Next to Dafu Tailfoot, Picklebeard. And he's walking around in a nice golden uh, robe uh, with a well-braided beard and hair. And he's talking to some dude. Talking to some high up mucking about fancy looking guy. Alright. Yep. He seems to be doing good. He's doing conducting good. He's, royal business. Yeah, he's conducting uh, royal business. Uh, and nothing. So... So we do have a reliable contact that we can, you know, talk to. He's he's still available. He's not dead or anything. No, no, he is not dead. He he's not dead. You are correct. Yes. Okay, we see what you were really looking for there. <laughs> no, he's 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 very much alive. No worries. If wait a minute, if Olek could I probably could have gone either way. If Olek could somehow see through the scrying, could he talk to Picklebeard telepathically? That's not how that works. Sorry. Spells do, right. it, it, spells do exactly what they say they do. How does... Wait, how does uh, Olek's telepath, uh, telepathy, eh, telepathy go? One mile. Well, you can see and hear through the sensor as if you were there. One mile. You can see and hear through the sensor as if you were there. You cannot send telepathic messages limited to one mile in radius through the thing as though you were there. Sure. Yeah, it's like you're there, but you're not there. Sure thing. No, that makes sense. Adam was so perturbed by that, he had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, perturbed, so perturbed by that interaction clarification. <laughs> All right. Uh. 
All right, you know? well, Picklebeard's there, so we can... We, we certainly know we have our contact when we get there. Mm-hmm. And, and we know everything's fine, and, you know, with so, Anaro going along, because if I remember correctly, she has a title. Let me pull up the sheet. Adam is okay, Turner's, Turner's got some lag on the voice chat. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. She has the title of Warrior Bunny of Mountain Home. I remember that. She <laughs> does explicitly rabbit war- the, the Rabbit Warrior, we believe is what they call it. I have, uh, I, I have it saved as Warrior Bunny. Yeah. I have the Shining One. <laughs> well, they they have jaguar warriors and they have rock warriors and they have you know all sorts of different animal themed warriors and and after an RL's great performance to save the king, they uh he you know they they decided to enact the temple of the rabbit warrior, <laughs> which are highly which are highly mobile light infantry, obviously. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. Light infantry is definitely fitting considering how fast she falls. <laughs> shock infantry really um so you mean she gets shocked and falls over yes <laughs> exactly what we mean <laughs> uh okay okay sorry one moment so we're just gonna we're just gonna do i will state that that this uh thing <clears throat> I will state that scrying does have a non-consumed, but it is a costly well, material component. It. So if Torner hasn't already, he needs to deduct a thousand gold pieces for this component. It's a focus. Well, the focus has to be worth at least a thousand gold pieces. So Isn't his staff worth more than a thousand? That's a good point. <laughs> I, I I had already noted the, uh, the, the thousand gold pieces, and it's like, that's a it. It's a focus. That's true. <laughs> Look like that now. Does it may work a thousand gold pieces? At least uh, a thousand. What's its rarity? Rare. Energy, uh, that probably is. Magic item price, rare, 2d10 times a thousand. So yeah, it's worth at least 2,000 gold. Oh yes, <laughs> we are so <laughs> evil. <laughs> It's like oh, no. I have it. oh. Yes. Yeah. It's like eleven thousand gold. It is rare major tier. All Never right. Mind. Never mind. All right. It means that it's worth a lot. <gasps> so So it sounds like it sounds like we are on the repair path. We it sounds like that is the case, and and it also sounds like we get to say something that Calden has been waiting for, no doubt for months in real life. Oh no. Uh-oh. Calden. What? The time that you get while they are gone. Oh boy. <laughs> is downtime. <laughs> no. You know, give or take Oleg like shenanigans. How, give, or how take Oleke, Olekian shena- give or take Olekian shenanigans, <laughs> you are now in downtime territory. Consider it a great <laughs> reward for your performance this last <laughs> many <laughs> sessions. What's our keyboard oh, going? With the day, the day is November 3rd. <laughs> Just let everybody know. Uh, so we think Adam and Narel and Aldis are going to Mountain Home, whilst Calden and Olek are staying behind. Do we have that right? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. I'm gonna. Oh no! Whoops! Stop! Stop! What? Don't, don't don't worry about that. That, oh. didn't, that didn't happen. <laughs> it was just us fiddling around with roll twenty controls. Uh, so, so we are going to ask you to roll a nature check. In R L and or Torner, whichever one you like, you're both looking for a suitable tree. I I, I just want to say, or just want to ask. I have more than fourteen hours of downtime, right? Yes. Oh well, okay. more than. Mm, not Would you like there. a guidance yeah, I mean, in these trying times? Don't you? Don't, don't I need think one. Be fine. Torner, Torner finds the biggest, chonkiest tree in the area, 
And he memorizes it good. And the uh, Harangan will keep it safe. And they both memorize it good. Yeah, and the har and the the Harangan will mark it as an important tree. <gasps> yeah. Perhaps even a sacred oak or some shit. We don't know. Well, um, like the maybe, maybe, maybe put like a rope or something around it with like little those little uh, paper charms or whatever. What are we? Sh what are we Shintos around here? Okay. <laughs> well, like the military, the the officer commands some people as a punishment to guard a tree, and twenty years later, people are still guarding it. <laughs> real. Uh, all right. So you have found a tree. Now here's the real question: We gotta ask y'all. Are you gonna buy a boat or are you gonna build a boat? I am an expert in carpenter's tools. Are you going to buy a boat or are you going to build a boat? Building a uh, boat will take longer. Buying a boat can happen now, but it will cost you money. How much money? Women, let's look at vehicles. It's going to be a lot. Just going to say that right now. It's usually not, not a lot. It's going to have to be big enough to carry what amounts to an elephant. So we are at least talking about. Uh, let's. Well, let's look at the keelboat. Keelboat D and D five E. It's got a ten foot mast. It's twenty feet across. It will be the cheapest thing that you can get at three thousand gold to uh, to get going. Hmm. You might I'm also sure we could afford that. The next thing you would have to get is either a sailing ship or a long ship. And that's 10,000 oh, that gold. Three. Mm. Well, mm. I guess I'm buying a boat. Unless you guys want to chip in and, and, and split the ownership. I mean, yeah, I'd be willing to chip chip in. How much is it again? Three thousand. So if we want to chip in, it'd be a thousand for the each of the three of us. Uh, the, uh we're gonna be here for like we're gonna be at the. the I need I need an all to come with me. Uh, I'm gonna go home and get a thousand gold. <laughs> you need what to come with you? An all. I need an all. <laughs> Just, just, just a quick home. The owner is completely out of money. He already uh, basically <laughs> borrowed from all. Right, right, because so, he got, because he got yeah. his big super potion that made him do max damage. Yeah. Oh, we totally <laughs> forgot. Oh man, it was worth it, though. He fucking took that shit down. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and get a hold. Oh yeah! Oh, we <laughs> forgot about that's that's real. Yeah. You might want to grab more than a thousand gold to pay off a lick. <laughs> How much you owe? <laughs> oh, that's funny as hell. Hmm. Uh, if only we were in Pathfinder. Crafting easier because you know shape wood is a spell. Yup. Or for that matter, or for that matter, just just the uh, the amount of overpowering the crafting stat for a lower level item. You know what's really funny? What? I fabricate. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> well, how big is fabricate's area of effect? Though? It uh, wouldn't, it's it, gonna be ten foot it, cube. So yeah, no, it it would. My minimum bonus I could... to my minimum bonus to crafting with intelligence here. We're talking expertise, so eight plus five from intelligence. Again, yeah. you can get a you can get a keelboat if you're gonna buy it. If if a torner is going back via what is it the the transport transport vehicle? <laughs> we yeah, I... say this was a thing in. 3-5, and we never thought a damn thing of it. But now that we're actually incorporating things like economy and stuff into the game, this is a super effective and useful fucking spell. What is it? <laughs> Transport, Transport via, via plants. plants. Oh, yeah. It, it only a, stays open for one round, but that is a full round that you it, can, it's like... A, it's a domain-level spell. It's 
nice. He's so- Which is just not something that happens in modern games. No, no, it it doesn't usually. Yeah, I know you're right. It's pretty nice. Yeah, and um, something I thought of is no, I can mean, technically cast it twice a day because of uh, natural recovery. Excellent. Uh, and I have mending. I can repair the fucking boats if they get damaged without spending all the fucking gold. Corner, you were uh, you were talking. I'm giving a thousand gold back to uh, no, Seth. You can't back to what? Back to Oleg? a thousand or what? Oh, yeah, half yeah. level. Okay, so I'll no, be able to okay. do it no, no, next no, level no. then. No, no, it says none of the slots can be six level or higher. Oh, no. Okay, no, I'm dumb. Okay, uh, you're giving a thousand gold back to Olek? And a thousand gold towards the boat. Alright, uh, so... Alex. So, uh, Inaral, Aldis, and, uh, uh, Torner are each thrown in a thousand for a keelboat to go down the river. Mm-hmm. I have subtracted it. Excellent. So, we have determined because of the speed of the river that you will arrive in Mountain Home in 1d6 days. We will roll that right here in the open. Congra- 1d6 plus 1. Sorry. We will roll that in the open right here. Wow. Wow. Speedy wow. little trip. Wow. Yeah. Damn. You, you make a... Uh, it, it, it leads you right there, man. It... It goes right for it. We like that all of this was a hundred percent randomly rolled too. Like, like we didn't design it. We're just like, hey, let's it's the best natural one on a d6. Well, best natural <laughs> Min- minimum damage, just what you wanted. <laughs> uh, so, so you actually arrive on your little keelboat in two days, and we're going to have to ask who the pilot is. Oh no. Uh, Don't everybody jump up too quick. Who has uh who has water vehicles proficiency? I don't. None of us do, but I mean in in theory, does the Naro probably, you know, do shape water stuff or shenanigan water bending shenanigans to steer the boat? Listen, I know how to build a boat. I don't know how to pilot one. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Torner, Torner, tell us you have a saving grace here. Um, well, I have land vehicles. <laughs> not gonna help you there. <laughs> we are sorry to say, Torner, that does not help you sail a keelboat. <laughs> but Torner... I, I guess we'll have to oh, hire someone. Oh, you're hiring yeah. somebody? Are, are I mean, you, if we can't do it, what happened? Wait, are are you expecting are you expecting these cat sized rabbits to know how to how to use a, a human sized keelboat? Well, apparently they have one we can buy. I mean, they got- they do, they do, they do. Okay. Uh, that all being said, you're gonna have to shell out some money for that guy. Yeah. Yeah. How much money? Five gold a day. So ten gold. Well, ten it. gold. Yeah. We'll pay him forty. You'll pay him 40, 40 gold? You know? Alright. Hey, Remove we 40 might be gold. There. You never know. Remove yeah. 40 gold. Torno over here giving the tip. Here we go. <laughs> he gets hey, you there. Couple with no, he gets you there. And I need with to blow my equipment. He gets you there with no damage to the boat and no damage to the goddess. That's good. Congratulations. As you arrive at the port, which is on a lake outside of Mountain Home, on the far side of the mountain from where you guys went in the last time, on a lake, uh, on the lake, you notice that parts of the of the fey groves have been torn down the the groves that attack attack things mhm oh the trees yeah parts of the trees have been either torn down or removed you can't tell which but now there are people moving in and out and accessing the lake hmm yeah. lovely yeah that's good so, uh, you want to do anything before you go and demand to see the uh, high high uh, historian, or you just want to go to him? 
People are wondering what the hell is on the on the back of your boat. <laughs> yeah, let's go see the high historian. All right. <laughs> as you as you walk through the city of Mountain Home, you reach the fair walls of the capital, the gates open, but still held by guards. As you walk to there, he says, Who are you? What do you want? In a in a rough dwarven, modern dwarven. Speaking in dwarven, I say, We are friends of the... Actually, what is his official title? The High Historian. We are friends of the High Historian. We have come to speak with him. Yeah, we have, we have an item historian. of great historical importance. Oh, I'm sure some piece of garbage that you picked up out of the Undercity or off in a faraway land. A faraway land, yes. Oh yeah, and you're probably the best, the best fighter in your entire village, or something, aren't you? No, I mean he's the best tinkerer. The High Historian gets all sorts of people bringing all sorts of trivial things to him. Get out of here. Use your name. <laughs> I am Aldous Ronan, known as the Shining One. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't heard of no Shining One. Who? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, if, 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 if it helps, um, I'm. I'm Anaro Recolter, the warrior bunny of Mountain Home. He squints his <laughs> eyes and goes, Oh my god! Oh, I'm so sorry, Rabbit Warrior! Please! Please come on in! Oh my <laughs> gracious! How foolish of me! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I was gonna have to take lead since apparently she's more recognizable. Which I mean, I guess makes sense because you know how do you not recognize a bunny? You are the queen, after all. The vampire queen. They, the vampire saying, they... queen. <laughs> Thank you, God. Mm. Thank you so much. If this wasn't gonna work, I was gonna start displaying my magic items just to at least prove that I'm not some fucking charlatan. <laughs> Oh, so, so you are, you are, of course, oh, sorry. Somebody say something? My negotiation would not have worked out very well for him. Uh, I probably would have started another conflict. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> another forest fire, another day. All right. All right, so you are brought to the to the lower libraries in the uppermost ranks of the Undercity, where many people happen to be wandering around with torches and lanterns, all of them beardless dwarves, of course, although some of them, you notice, have started growing their beards in. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and you're brought to the the high book hall for the library of the high historian, and there you find Dathu Tailfoot, known to you as Picklebeard, talking amongst several beardless scholars and priestly types. And he sees you, and he goes, "Oh hell!" And he stands up, and he, and he comes over, and he hugs you, Torner, and he goes, "Oh, it's great to see you again. Where y'all been?" We've been on a war path to kill the Fae that started the war in the cube. Yeah. <laughs> We've been busy. It, it's been a hell of a journey. I hear you. It's been my crazy around here, too. Uh, what, what brings you around here? We have an artifact of great magical import that we wish to, re to repair. But in the meantime, really? it, needs some, it needs safe storage until we're ready to do so. All right. Well, where is it? Uh, show, pull it on out. All right, we'll bring we'll bring in the machine goddess it's, and, and it's give him. We need to fix the orb. <laughs> well, we need to stow the machine goddess as well. I, I feel yeah. like the, I feel like the goddess is a little more impressive than the broken orb. Right? Yeah. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just bring both in? We're doing both, but here's the machine goddess it needs to be saved. Here's the orb we need to repair. 
Thank God. <laughs> Uh, so, as you bring the orb in, he goes, Well, I'll be damned. I don't know what that is. And as you, and as you bring in the machine goddess, he goes, Holy smokes! They had one of these at the old university! Oh, wow! How'd you get your hands on this? Uh, they going to the old university. Wow, it's still there, is it? Not anymore. <laughs> No, the old it university's is still there. there. No, totally I, I, I'm, talking, I'm talking about the machine goddess. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the machine goddess more. still isn't there. The machine goddess is here now. But yeah. Wow. The old, the old robotics and clockwork division was working on something like this, making some farming automatons or whatnot. I was so interested in it. I remember, I was an engineer myself. <laughs> well, they got it up and running, because when we got there, there was a fully functioning farm with machines and, well... Uh, potato people. Potato people. <laughs> yeah, they Don't they succeeded say. very well. By the gods, seems like a lot more survived the collapse than I thought. All right, well let's uh let's take her on down to the basement, see what we can get for her. Think I got somebody? As for that weird broken orb thing, I think I know somebody who might. Might just have a solution for you, but you're going to have to talk him into it. Oh, boy. So, you are brought down deeper into the, uh, to the Undercity. Sorry, we're just... Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, so, he, you go deeper into the Undercity, and you find what looks to be one lone forge in the background and in the back of the main forge area you see a uh, rectangular slab of thick green ooze with twisting metallic veins and strange lights illuminating its translucent in uh, interior everything it, it there is no dust in the area uh, in the active thing. Uh, it resembles something along the lines of a gelatinous cube, but it's easier to see. And he says, Everybody, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Joseph. And he uh, gestures at the, uh, at the ooze. The ooze then immediately uh, spits out a small metal... Uh, slab from its from its essence, and the slab has writing on it in Dwarven. All right. What does the it slab say? says? A pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Are you the smith we've come here to see? <laughs> it's uh, a pleasure to meet you as well, and I'll greet him. It spits it out. Be rude it after spits all. out another slab and says, "I don't know. What have you come to see?" It's never met you before. It doesn't know what the fuck you were talking to. Right, right, right. No, that <laughs> would have made more sense towards Picklebeard. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, sorry, guys. I've got a cold. Let's just blame my idiocy on the cold and not the fact I'm an idiot. So, so uh, by the way, as, as it spits out and you finish with the first slab, uh, uh, Picklebeard takes the slab from your hands and tosses it back into the fabricator ooze, wh where it then immediately dissolves. He needs to get material back to make more. He explains. Uh, makes sense. So when we finish reading, we just toss it back in. You just toss it back in, yeah. All right. Uh, we've come to see if you could help us repair um, some artifacts of great import. The fabricator ooze slumps a bit, goes a little, a little, a little goopy. Uh, and then reforms, and then slide, spits out another tablet before sliding back into uh, <laughs> throwing his words back at him, huh? Uh, and then spits out another tablet before sliding back into the corner and uh, immersing itself in like a little depression in the floor. The tablet says, I'm not just a machine anymore, I don't take orders. Well, we didn't well, order guess... you, we're asking for your help. Well, what can we do in exchange for your services? 
Don't forget to give him his words back. Yeah, yeah, giving him his tablets back. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Is that weird ooze machine in any way, shape, or form related to whatever ooziness Oleg got into? In that what? the primordial ooze is like one of the first oozlinesses and all ooze henceforth came from it? Yes. In, okay. in 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 if you're questioning if they know each other, no. <laughs> um, but it would certainly and we have be no way cool. to it would certainly be leverage if you had come along, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we think this is amazing, because like, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it uh it, well it it'll take money. But it's you know, what what do you got? Like What's what's repairing this priceless orb worth to you? Uh, hmm. I have I have an idea. What does he have for forge hands? He doesn't need a forge hand. This forge is Daffod Alefoot's forge. He just spends most of his time there because it's relaxing, and there's a depression in the floor specifically made for him. Now I'm actually a little confused. Dothit, Dothit Alefoot, uh, almost as if on cue to that answer, walks over to what seems like a mini fridge, pulls out a bottle of a, a couple bottles of ale, and then tosses one into the ooze. John uh, 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 Joseph, <laughs> before himself sitting down on a chair next to his forge and you know rubbing his hands together and holding them out to get a little warmth, you know. Be, be, be right back. I need to use the bathroom. Go figure. Go figure. The functional equivalent of a dwarven living room is a forge. Yeah. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> Especially not when you think about how Dothan Alpha is like one of them classic dwarves for right. the collapse. Good. Um. He needs raw materials. Sure, if he is wants anything, to. Is it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to him and ask him, is there anything in particular that you kind of need or want or anything? Holy shit. I just realized Oleg was able to make steel out of water. <laughs> oh, that would also be helpful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. That's why we were like, oh, Oleg's not going. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is going to be an adventure. You know, it's gonna end up that they're gonna come back and they're gonna go along after all. So, so for the <laughs> record, we like to think that while you guys are gone, uh, Olek is just standing at the riverside, like, shoveling water out, turning it to steel, and then hunking it over and just... You know, you know, <laughs> making steel. <laughs> yeah, now making a little steel sandbox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, since when does Olek have fucking transmutation? It's a curse. It's one of his curses. He's been cursed with it. It's oh the last, it's the last okay, curse I, that he I has. I made the decision that it was best to leave it there because that can be very valuable. Turn yeah, water no, everybody. fucking steel. Water, mm -hmm. water, any water that you carry turns to steel. Yeah. Oh my god. Not iron, steel. Like, re-refined. We have even determined exactly how much steel Olek can make in any given round. Good lord. If the party if the party moves at 30 feet through the forest in their travel speed, Olek can use his entire action every day for eight hours a day while you're traveling to create steel and then use his bonus action to use a dash action to catch up with the rest of the party. <laughs> Consequently, everywhere you go for the future, we feel like Olek is going to be leaving a literal line of steel blocks. <laughs> what? I mean, I did, I did have a thought with the wording of the spell. Carrie, if he gets strong enough to pick up a barrel full of water, 
that becomes a barrel full of steel and immediately crushes his feet. <laughs> well, not necessarily. We could position him on a platform oh above it and then have him, you know, like center lifted up just one inch off the ground. That's all you need, you know? Yeah. Good lord. Oh, yeah. The absolute, you know, like, the absolute abuses of the economy. Oh, Oleg, there is absolute abuse that we can do, and it's Oleg great. Has found, Oleg has found the answer to Crypt Canyon's iron shortage. If only I had people making safe areas for mining within. Uh, but we've been on the warpath. We've been on the warpath. That's fine. That's cool. Hmm. Uh, so, yes, Oleg is the answer to your iron shortage. Uh, so, <coughs> so yeah. Who has an idea? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what, what we're currently doing. We got sidetracked. Well, if you if you must simply pay him in money, he'll take to uh, ten thousand gold to repair it. Um. If we use commune with nature simply... to point out where uh, some valuable ore veins are. He doesn't want to go collect the gold. This is a service that he's doing for you, and thus you should pay him for goods in money for goods or services, which is the baseline of the economy. He is he tells you on a little thing. It, it, <laughs> is there is there perhaps something that you want that we could provide for you? Yeah, money. <laughs> he oh he, he already asked you, what do you got? You guys have lots of money. I, I, I don't know if you realize this. We do. However, it would be it would be prudent for the economic campaign to look to save money wherever possible. Uh, uh, look, we know a guy... something about not being a machine money. anymore. We can supply... Does, does anybody? Oh, yeah, I, no. I, don't, I don't. I don't speak broken internet connection. I just have a broken internet connection. Amazingly, <laughs> actually, doing... Anase, you're you're doing amazing. Oh god damn it! Did I not? It's no longer shit. Oh god damn it! Did I not? He's Adam. gone. Well, Adam is gone. The internet has eaten him. Oh, he's writing. Yep. We'll we'll just wait for Adam. I've got a thing, but we'll wait for Adam. No problem. Soon, very soon. We know a guy that can make steel for you. Yeah, we just have to go get him and convince him to come with. Why would I want steel? What would I use steel for? We have steel here. Fair point. <laughs> You said I wanted to ask the the uh, apparently fabricating ooze. Um, you said something about his name's Joseph, by the way. Thank you for Come reminding on. me, <laughs> Joseph. Um, you said something about not being a machine anymore, not taking orders. What we would have you repair is a creature that creates sentient machines. Perhaps you may be looking for. Uh, I don't know you, so apologies if this is perhaps offensive, but perhaps some modification to your form? What's wrong with my form? <laughs> I didn't say there was. I was wondering if you had something that you would like. I like, I like myself just fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, good to know he's got a healthy self, self-image. <laughs> yeah, lo lo looks like he's in need of nothing. <laughs> Except money, <laughs> right? He's been he's been living under this place for two hundred thousand years. He got a friend. <laughs> so, Dothan, uh, Picklebeard kind of shrugs at you as you know you're not getting anywhere with the loan. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he really doesn't need anything. He he's got his sentience and and he, no, he's he's good. Like, he's happy right. with his life. Yeah, he's he's got a friend <laughs> now. He's not alone anymore. You know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Alright, I guess money is really the only option. <laughs> Problem is, it's 10,000 gold. It's not the only option. It's just like, you know, you guys what? haven't been offering him anything that he wants. 
Well, I got nothing unless I can <laughs> roll to guess an answer. I got grab no Marilyn Monroe pin up for him or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You're just offering him more work. Like I, I've got, I've got nothing as a player. <laughs> yeah, just, let them, Good. just let them pay you, Sha. It's okay. They can, they can pay. Hey, they're looking for other ways. <laughs> unless there's something, unless there's something I can roll, I've got nothing. So, so. this may or may not be the domain of insight, Jack. One, one of those things is just like you know, oh, we can offer notes. stuff. It's just we don't know what we can offer. At least I don't know. I mean, I mean, we're potentially offering something that the machine goddess could do after being repaired, but he don't want. He's to. fine. He, he's fine with his body as is, though. He's cool. Yeah. He's yeah. Super he's absolutely happy. fine with his life and, and <laughs> fundamental form. <laughs> He's super cool. The primordial ooze approves. <laughs> it's like, oh, I am man. in fact not a machine anymore. I do not need a more corporeal body or potentially greater sentience. Okay, okay. Everybody roll an insight if you want. And I don't suppose the dwarven advantage applies here. Oh, goodness, no. Yeah. Corner. All right, an RL. The only thing that he's been talking about that he really needs are things like he's not alone anymore. We, you need Olek. You do need Olek. Olek. <laughs> Olek. It would be a, a leisurely fucking breeze. He would just charm his fucking way through it because that's just <laughs> Olek's galaxy brain ability. Yeah, a hundred percent. <laughs> um, well, I guess so, I need to go get Olek. So, wow. uh, in RL, in RL, you notice that the most prominent thing is that uh, also Tornus is in RL. Let's get Olek. Uh, you've noticed that the most prominent thing about him is that he doesn't like the idea of being alone. He's not alone anymore, so he doesn't really need much anymore. So maybe the at, at the heart of getting him to do what you want is some kind of companionship of some sort. He well, has a friend. He, he has a friend. He has Picklebeard. Maybe something else along those kind of lines will get him. Well, we don't what know any other oozes except for... What's what's what what is that? I don't know. Eset. What is that? Oh, it's Eset. Okay. Oh my God. Is is trying? We were like, what's going on? What I uh, said, what I intend to. What was that noise, Eset? <laughs> that was just a little bit. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Go on. What I intend to use the artifacts for are to bring to life simulated people so that they have corporeal forms, as opposed to the, the simulation maintaining their existence failing and their lives ending. They would have their own free will, but perhaps if you... Wait a second, find... whoa, wait a second. All this, are, are, are you reading in RL's mind to figure out how to... In RL, did you tell this to all this? <laughs> I was thinking this like 10 minutes ago, and I forgot okay, it. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, I was on. thinking this like 10 minutes ago, and then I forgot it. Okay, go on, <laughs> sorry. So, so, so they, they would have... They would ha they're quite simple folk, the people of the simulation. However, um, if you're desiring friends... They could meet you and decide for themselves, potentially. Uh, if you need more companions, they may want to speak to you. And they, some of them may may choose to be your companion. Companions. Well, I already have a friend. Would you like more friends? <laughs> you know, th this is such a silly way of doing it. It's like, hey, maybe silly. I can possibly, potentially, you know, convince make other people to be your friend. I mean, come on. I can literally make potential friends. They have their this own is, will and sentience, which... This is super weird. It is, in fact, super fucking weird. This is the closest I can get, because we can't make them be friends. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them to be your friend, but oh, they are simulated so people funny. given given corporeal form. <laughs> and if I give them a body, they'll be your friend for me. 
<laughs> how does how does that benefit me now? Olek knows that he has the God King of the Ooze. Uh, uh, Aldus absolutely knows because he spoke to the Ooze first. That's true. Yeah. He one hundred percent. Oh my god. <laughs> he one hundred and ten percent didn't trust this. And then Olek like, good, take it. <laughs> it, it. It seems after after having Olek take the chance, it was in fact legit. <laughs> there are other Ooh. forms of companionship other than sapient friendship. We're just putting that one out there. You mean so like some kind of we, pet or we have, another we have an example of it. We have an example of it lying around like a big dumb oaf on our bed right next to us. So yeah. <laughs> So yeah, a pet, a pet, but like, yeah, we could probably get him a pet, but what would he like as a pet? Do, do you ask him that? It, 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 okay. If perhaps, yeah. or, yeah, alternatively to, to sapient companionship, do you desire pets of some kind? A pet like what? What kind of pet? A, 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 a canyon full <laughs> of friendly animals of all sorts. Aldous could give him a list. Roll, yeah, we do uh, have a... Roll, what, what is it? Are we doing... Are we doing diplomacy or persuasion now? We, 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 keep, we keep jumping back and forth. It would be persuasion in... Persuasion, in... yes. Roll a <laughs> persuasion check. Sorry, there's no persuasion in uh, Pathfinder, so we... we uh... <laughs> Oh Roll a persuasion check. This is pure D20, baby. Four. <laughs> what the fuck would some shiny metal covered weirdo want have that I would want as a pet? The I mean I can list <laughs> the entire canyon worth of animals. No, he, he's not the only one with animals. I have animals as well. Are are they are they better than what he says? Because he's making this sound really horrible. <laughs> I mean, they could be. And Torner has even more animals than me, so you've got quite the pick, really. What, I, what I don't think you're getting it. I, he doesn't necessarily want a fucking pet. Or an animal, well, I should, if, I should if say. He doesn't, if he does want one, he doesn't know enough about pets or animals to know what he would want. You gotta talk him through this thing. What the, what the hell's an animal for? Alright, uh, well, companionship, obviously, but, you know, they can serve other purposes as well, depending on the pet. Uh, I know there are some that can, you know, do rudimentary speech. They might, they won't be able to hold a conversation, but it can be entertaining. At this point, if Oleg would have been here, he would have recommended that Ina release his pet. That's fucking hilarious, and we love it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is there an animal that produces beer? No, but that would that would be interesting of how they would do that. Is there an animal that brings beer? Oh yeah, some some pets can be trained to bring you stuff. I want an animal that brings me beer. All right, let's let me. Let I can't. You. I can't open the fridge by myself. True, true. Hmm. Uh, where... Pet Pet to, you know, find even the thing a dog with can open a door if it has a rope on the handle. <laughs> Should we train a dog to open a door and get a beer? That'd be hilarious. We've known a dog who's trained to go get beers for his master. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. They can absolutely mm -hmm. be trained to go get you a beer. It's great. Dogs are awesome. Dogs are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we we could get him a dog, but uh, but the thing is, we'd have to train the dog too, or he would have to train it, or well, It'd someone have would have to train the dog. It would have to be pre-trained, preferably. Me. Hmm. Would that be really hard since you have two druids that can speak to fucking animals? Yeah, you do have druids here. They can, they can, they can train just, them up real quick. They can just get a monkey and be like, "Hey, this, this is a beer. This is the command for beer." I think we have monkeys. 
You you're surrounded by jungles. You have monkeys. Yeah. My God. How you technically an RL has some monkeys. They're back at home. Yeah. That she got from Pao Yu. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to remember where that list is. Awaken a monkey brings up brings up Torner. Mm. Are you going are you going to bestow this monkey with sapience just so he can bring beers to this ooze? This is very much like the butter robot incident here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this oh my th- this god. does bring uh, what is, this does what bring is up my purpose? Uh, what, is what is my, my purpose? purpose? You bring me beers. <laughs> oh my god. I, but I feel like, you know, we could train it to do more than just bring beer. It could, you know, it could, you know, be a little little monkey that, you know, when someone's done with a plate, it could return the plates as well. I like so Adam's want... train of thought. It's so that the monkey can be a drinking buddy, too. Oh. I don't know how but... good of an idea that is. That's so true. Right, 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 doesn't want to share, but... Turner, uh, roll a persuasion. Oh, jeez. We're following we you... Roll a persuasion on this on this monkey drinking buddy. If it's a good roll, I'll give you a flash of, flash of genius. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not gonna role play that. I'm I'm too too sick IRL to role play what that entails. That's <laughs> I'm gonna have to get roll somehow. You get a plus five. <laughs> here, 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 here's here's a gnarls qualm with that. Um, what if we get another singing? alligator guy situation? <laughs> Are you well? You're gonna leave uh, hypothetically with the with the thing. Are you are you guidancing him also? Uh, if if giving him magical guidance on this persuasion isn't somehow considered obtrusive or offensive, then yes, following Baldur's Gate rules. Yes. <laughs> okay. Get another one. He's <laughs> <Please>, thirteen. <laughs> oh my god. You technically matched. You meet or be <laughs> okay. If you can, if you can bring me a monkey, an intelligent monkey that gets me beers and drink with me, I will do this for you. <laughs> if you, if you get him, he's extremely dubious. He's he's over here like. <laughs> I don't even know what that would look like, but I'm so in. I, I, I'm so curious. I'll take it if you can get him a, a monkey drinking buddy. You have my interest will, he, and my then, attention. And my attention. You have my attention <laughs> and my interest. Yeah. Like, all right. All right. All right. He'll. He's very dubious that, you know, he doesn't even know what this would look like, but he's going to give you a chance here. Does, does he even know what a monkey is? <sighs> we don't Probably think he does. not. We don't I think mean, he does. Like, he, there's no reason to think he would. <laughs> we can uh, tell him what a monkey nature. is. It's like a very short dwarf, but a lot hairier. Commune with nature outside. Where are the monkeys? All right. We think we know how to do this. Here's a thought I just had. Can monkeys even safely drink, you know, alcoholic stuff? Oh, I just yeah. asked that, but I realized, oh, yeah. hey, I'm a monkey. You're a monkey. And have you seen India? Uh, they have <laughs> drunken monkeys wandering around all over um, the streets. Uh, Humans are particularly good at um, dealing with poison, though. So... A monkey might actually not be that, a good drink. That is, that is two things, though, because it's not even all humans. It's that, in particular, the as people are much better with alcohol than others, too. So it's not just that it's just humans. It's also certain humans are better at it than others. This is also <laughs> true. No, uh, yes, there... You can find monkeys to the south. <laughs> it's beer, it'll be fine. But it's dwarven beer. It's corn beer, actually. Oh. Yeah, chicha. Uh, anyway, right, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, The um, there are monkeys to the south. You will have to find a survival to track them down properly, as they are always in motion. Yeah, makes sense. Who here, here is the best bonus to survival? Ooh. 
I've got a plus five. Adam. I mean, there's I mean, no reason actually, both of us can't do the roll. Uh, one tracker at a time. All right. Apparently, uh, Torner is going to do the tracking. I will. I uh, will be replenishing guidance every minute to help him throughout this process. <laughs> that's that's fine. It's pretty. It's pretty easy enough. Uh, you just follow the howling. There are a bunch of monkeys in the trees as you go into the uh the area south of Mountain Home, and they start throwing fruit at you. All right, speak with animals. Speak with animals. Hey, what are you doing? Get oh. out of here! Get out of here! You go! Fuck off! Fuck off right now! This is my territory. <laughs> Me and my clan. I've been living here for as long as anybody cares to remember. You get the fuck out of here right now! <laughs> I, will throw my, I will throw my shit at you. <laughs> how far? How far does animal friendship? Thirty feet. Uh, they are more than thirty feet up. Darn. Doing the flying. <laughs> wait, are you wait? If uh, I was here, mm, literally boots of flying. I can just choose to walk on air. Problem is, uh, they're gonna be throwing stuff at you. Fruit and poop. <laughs> oh no! I only have press. Oh wait, I don't have press the digitation anymore. Right? I got rid of. No, that. that's that, that's a couple days away. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little out of it. What am I missing? You give the negotiate. Oh wait, Turner, are you? How are you getting to this? This monkey, the negotiator. Are you talking about the negotiator, the monkey who's who's telling telling an RL to get the fuck out of there? <laughs> Very curious about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she can she she can offer offer him the wine. Like, we, but we've got tasty fruit drinks for you. <laughs> <laughs> giving it to Anarl. Okay, Anarl, you're 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 trying to offer the tasty fruit drink to the monkey. Mm-hmm. Alright, roll a persuasion. Oh jeez. <laughs> no, he doesn't trust you. Fuck you. You're a stranger. You're in his territory. This is his territory. You're at a home. You go on back to that mountain where you came from. <laughs> I don't want your. I don't want your dick. Here, I'll throw something at you instead. And he throws a a mango at you or some shit. <laughs> and I'll, and I'll, and when he does it, all of his buddies go. <laughs> Even through the speak with animals. Oh yeah, because because they're not. They're, it's not linguistic. They're 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 just you know. Screaming and, and hollering. Uh, oh, I don't... oh, okay. Torner. Torner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, okay, one moment. Uh... <laughs> right, Torner sees the mango get thrown and just goes, all right, that's it. It's charmed. You have a telepathic link. You can use this to issue commands, which it does its best to obey. Uh, creature takes only actions you choose. Oh, at fifth level, okay. At higher levels, up to ten minutes. Okay. Wow. All right. Shit. Well, okay. One moment. <laughs> oh my goodness. We'll just go here. It surprisingly has a plus one for its wisdom. <laughs> uh, so Torner, Torner zaps it with uh, a dominate and says, get down here and behave yourself. And it does that. It goes, gah, 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 yes, sir. <laughs> oh my goodness. And goes down to the ground and uh, stops being a shithead. And all of the other monkeys run away. 
<laughs> like, oh jeez! This is this is getting as as Flicker would say, this is getting even more questionable by the minute and I mm-hmm. really not and not rolls over in the back just like I'm not comfortable with this. You are this going is... to use animal friendship on them, it's functionally the same. That's You're up in RL. <laughs> you guys are you guys are doing your own questionable decisions. It's all on you. <laughs> <laughs> Classic D and D questionable, morally questionable choices. Apparently, you're and, uh, you, you can no longer complain at me that I was flying a fly, uh, that I was you know guiding a flying plane and crashed it. <laughs> I th- I think there's superior moral moral stake here with with giving a monkey intelligence to become a drinking buddy than crashing a plane and killing lots of people. But okay. there is know. a difference between giving kidnap- him the option and forcing him. <laughs> you know, we're about to say if you if you basically do the psychic equivalent of shoving a bag over his head <laughs> and then take and then brainwashing him to be a head and then forcing him into a <laughs> <laughs> at the very least, at the very least, Olek gets to make the defense that he actually had a malevolent fae literally whispering in his ear, like intrusive thoughts, but far stronger. Yeah, and my my intent here isn't to isn't to uh, do what you said. I don't know what they're doing, but I hope it's simply to get it to calm down so it can be spoken to, as opposed to the bag over its head brainwashing. I, I also want to point yeah. out that Olek also had no idea that there was a giant fire elemental in the ship. That's also true. Yeah. Olek is to plead ignorance. <laughs> it's true. I think, it's I true. think Olek Olek didn't, it. didn't he have some awareness of the ship with the magic orb and all that kind of stuff? He just wouldn't necessarily no, know that it was. No, he pretty he pretty much just knew it was made of chaos or whatever, and that he had some niggling voice in his ear literally telling him to crash it into the ground. That's lovely. Jeez. Yeah. No, no, he, he very much uh he, he very much gets a pass on that one. You're up in our I'll give him Oh, so first we psychically dominate the monkey, then we get him drunk to lower his inhibitions. <laughs> well, well, that was of what you could have a life full of. Alright. That's I, kind of, here's what I was hoping to do, because I do avoid doing the awaken thing, because like again, I don't I don't want to, you know, Butter bought this, like Shy said earlier. But, but, so, Uz did say intelligent monkey. I mean, monkeys are still relatively intelligent. I mean, it had a no, plus one to its wisdom, no. so. If you, can, if you can bring him a talking monkey that is his drinking partner, he, he was very much talking about the awakened monkey here. Mm, right. All the give, him drink, all gonna, give him a drink, ask him if he wants more, says Torner. Look, yeah, I guess I guess that's what she'll have to do, you know. Give him a drink and offer that, you know, we can we can, you know, ra- raise your intelligence and uh, you'll be able to get more and have greater companionship. Guys, I just want to say that the consequences of these actions are not my problem. <laughs> We're playing D and D. It's fine. <laughs> yes, the monkey wants more wine. If you ask him, it is tasty. All right. Oh man, I got that poor monkey addicted. Yeah, it no, did just totally occur to me a monkey. So it did just occur to me a monkey. Even even if he raises his intelligence, probably wouldn't be very happy underground. Monkeys can are remarkably flexible, and Dathudale foot travels all over the city. Oh, all right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be underground forever. You just, you know, fair, fair, yeah. So, keep in mind, you need to convince it to go along with something because you can't concentrate on the dominate beast that charms it while you're concentrating on the casting of awaken. So, you need to actually convince it to go through with this plan of its own. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't world. matter. Awaken requires an eight-hour casting time, so. Mm. Yeah, what I'm what I'm saying is functionally you have to convince it to stick with you for the whole process. Unless you're just going to, you know, compel it. <laughs> they tie it up. So yeah, so spend some time tying <laughs> it first. I was saying, let's let's talk to it first. Let's let's make this as least kidnappy as possible, please. All right. Well, ten minutes goes by. 
Uh, how are you? How are you keeping it from running away as soon as it has the option to do so? Well, we offered it wine. We offered. We we said you know we could have more. We have if, a way to if you get sta- it more. If he stays, if he stays after ten minutes, you will give him more. Yeah, we can we can get him more. Okay, okay. He'll stay after ten minutes. He won't run away after the domination falls. He'll say, "Okay, can I have some more now?" <laughs> sure, we can give him more. Excellent, excellent. And he likes it. He likes it even more than the first time he drank it. Is that because he did it of his own will? No, it's it's because it's wine and it's alcohol and it tastes better the more you drink. <laughs> like fat. I think yeah, we should probably turning him into mm. an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is gonna be a drinking buddy in a dwarven city. Yeah, in a dwarven city. Yeah, not very, very, very questionable things going on that I'm kind of glad I didn't interrupt. <laughs> All well, here's the thing, if you were here, we wouldn't have to resort to the drinking monkey. Yeah, but it's you are so... Hilarious. No, but, like, look, look, look at the beauty of this. You are so invested in freeing holographic creatures <laughs> that you take real creatures and force them to be drinking buddies <laughs> rather than staying with their own party. <laughs> this is super fucking funny. Sorry, we just... <laughs> Greater restoration exists. He'll be fine. Wait, so... doesn't lesser restoration cure poisoned? Yes, it does. You don't even need greater. Oh my god. So are you saying that instead of coming to the conclusion that your actions are morally bankrupt, you have instead found a workaround around them so that you can continue to get this monkey even drunker? And he'll just not get cirrhosis. <laughs> My god. Well, you know, until we leave. Conse- consequences of their actions. They learn nothing from them. We love it. Magic! <laughs> Torner says magic! <laughs> oh. The things you do to save money. Well, he, you, you say you have... There's a place with more nice drinks if he wants. He does want more nice drinks. Mm. Roll a persuasion check, Torner. He'll get there. Don't worry. Or maybe he won't get there. We don't know. Oh! Oh no! (sighs) Oh no. He, 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 uh... It's funny. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. And he goes, goes, well, can't you, can't you bring the nice drinks out here? (laughs) You you clearly already did, so you can do it again, right? (laughs) But we won't be able to do it forever. All right. You can be in my territory if every time you come into my territory, you bring me some of the tasty drinks. Guys, I think we might need to start over with a different monkey. <laughs> <laughs> You've made friends with the guy that you haven't convinced him to come with. <laughs> He'll definitely remember you. <laughs> oh yeah, it's this nice guy who bring me booze. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I love this. Mm-hmm. This I, is, I, this I, is how the monkey problem this, in India started. At this at this point, I'm starting to wonder, maybe I should just pay the gold. <laughs> Still a lot of gold. Do we even have that much gold is the question. Yes, but it's a lot. 10,000 is a lot of fucking gold. This is so beautiful. <laughs> Corner over here typing. Just try to find a different monkey. <laughs> well, I tried. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should. Maybe we should just split the gold cost. Yeah, we should probably just split the gold cost because at this point, Anarlo's just like you know she's had time to dwell on it. It's just like one of those things. She's like, I, I, okay, I'm starting to not like this idea. This this is sounding like slavery with extra steps. Oh my god! This I just is so wanted funny. to convince a money that if it wanted, I just want money. Well, I just wanted to convince a monkey that if it wants to live a life of getting drunk, that it can come with us. <laughs> yeah, but why can't you just come to it? 
and it lives a life of getting drunk. Mm-hmm. Because it's easier <laughs> when the drunk, when you go to the drunk, then the drunk comes to you. <laughs> but the drunk already came to him. But- you came to him and got him drunk. <laughs> so it's three people, it's 10,000, so that's 3,333 gold and 33 silver and 33 copper pieces and then 0.33333333 repeating copper pieces. So, so a lot, a lot. So one person spends an extra gold, yes. It, it's, my, it's my pet project. I will spend the one extra rounding error gold. <laughs> Or right, are you guys, or whatever. Are, are you guys going to admit defeat and go back to the fabricator ooze and admit that you cannot get him an intelligent drinking partner? So, is, is it dawning on them this, that this is a highly morally questionable decision? You think it's so oh, like I said, the Nara was already starting to get uncomfortable. It, it, it's more like the way to succeed. There, there is a high chance of failure to go the morally questionable route, and the most morally unquestionable route is not currently working. <laughs> so you're gonna pay him? I think yeah, so. Yeah, we'll have to pay him. <laughs> let's see what, let's see what, let's see what Ooh. Adam Flash Torner has to input. I like how they were going through all of this just to try and save a few gold. But that's the best Not part. a few! A few! Only a few! 10,000 gold is a few? Oh, that's true. You've got a mountain of hemp. Money is no object to you anymore. <laughs> you have a little mountain 20, of 20,000 gold! Did you forget that? Yeah, no, some of you have really been pulling the economics game well. Like, no, we, we hate to say it, but called it over here, galaxy economic brain. Like, mm-hmm. same with Olek. Olek's also hella fucking rich. Not sure if anybody knew that. Like, right, right, right. If now, I could be bothered, if I could be bothered to go through every single in-game day of crops, I have an in- I should have an absolutely insane amount of food. Well, that's the danger of not directly managing your own business. You don't uh, know exactly what's going on, and so you don't know the resources that you have at your disposal. I mean, oh, I, trust me, I, I, only, I, only, of food. I only did that for the extended rest. That's it. Yeah. I, I don't do it for every day. I just do it for the ones that matter. And it did matter. <laughs> it did matter. <laughs> he's he's thanking himself for that work. Really, I'm missing productions on a few other on a few other um, uh, products, for lack of a better word. I'm missing math for that. But that. All right, all, all right, all this. Then the real question lies: How much money you got? And no, uh, I just son? didn't want to spend it all. Okay. Okay. So all this is paying for it. Are we splitting it three ways? I'm trying to figure out, you know, what I, I have, think... and you know, still need to figure out the, you know, subtract from. I think the since it's earlier. Aldous's pet project, he should pay five k, while the other two pay twenty five hundred. That's reasonable. That's extremely reasonable, actually. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. All to I'm me. saying is that that's going to be the cleanest division, <laughs> and it accounts for the person who has the most investment and the two people who don't really care all that much. They care a little. A little. No, who cares about the people in the holograms? Not as much as all this does. Well, we are going to run off the restroom re- real quick, so talk amongst yourselves, and then once we get back, we'll uh, figure this stuff out. I'll go ahead and put back <laughs> to the five, uh, if you guys are going to do the 2500, so I-, I can go ahead and do that. Me. I'm so glad that didn't show. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll be back in a minute. <clears throat> I mean, alternatively, I pay your share and you pay me back, and, that's, and we don't even really have to worry about it. Just subtract it from your inventories. And or you can borrow back. from like some more. <laughs> or, 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 <laughs> you just let him pay your share since he wants to save the people. <laughs> like, like you just pay me back because like, narratively, I'll just we just subtract it from our respective inventories, and next chance we get, it's it's paid for. I can't remember for our currency. Is it system of ten for conversion or system of a hundred for conversion? 
It's, uh, it's ten, ten. Ten, 10 copper to a silver, 10, 10 silver to a gold. Okay. Yeah, and gold 10 gold, gold to a platinum. Yep. And we, we do not ever acknowledge Electrum pieces. In fact, I wish Roll20 had an option to delete that currency from to hide it entirely. <laughs> Electrum is such a stupid fucking currency. Holy shit, I have more gold than I thought. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean... We both I can... have a lot of gold. Like, a lot more gold than we think, because a lot of it's tied up in the hemp. <laughs> It's you know, not not just the hemp. hemp we have. Not just the hemp, but like you guys have a lot of people that you have to pay, and I don't have that. You know, so basically all of my money turns turns into turns into goods. I have to like keep my people fat, and that's about it. Uh. Uh, so, so we've got that all deducted, right? Mm, in a row? I'm, wor I'm, I'm, wor I'm working on figuring things out. So minus 2,500. Okay, Cause like, because like, I'm, I'm, look I'm looking at how much, you know, she had for, you know, I still needed to subtract the boat, which was what, a thousand from each of us? Like, I'm trying to remember where else I've been keeping track of money, because she does not have a lot of... Well, she won't have a lot of money on her after the boat. I can straight up fit almost all of the money that I have in my bag of holding. Like, it's a little over capacity, realistically. I've got a couple chests at home, but, like, I can have basically all of it with me. Me. So, I didn't, I didn't bother tracking individual chest item weight limits, crap like that. Folding can hold 500, right? Yeah, my, my okay. overcarry capacity before I started subtracting gold, it was only like 50 pounds over. Like, seriously. Uh, no, I, I, was I, I, was, I was just making sure. Yeah, no, don't. I was, I was only over capacity by a little bit. Most of that weight is all the fucking coins. No, uh, it was like, okay, was it 400 or 500? Just 500. to see how, how much room uh, I have in my bags of holding. Which is a lot. Yeah. Which, which currency do I have on me? That's a good question. Uh, having a cold sucks. I'm sick of being sick. This is, this is going to be a fun day. Because I have second D&D &D after this. Yeah? I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a stop to get some food as well after this. Hey Flecker, did uh did you how did you how are you tracking your bags of holding? Do you have separate like item sheets? Starling. Okay. <laughs> I made I made a character sheet with a strength of twelve and then a little weight offset and I just let it use the automatic like the the encumbrance stuff. Yep. But Starling is uh Starling is my bags of holding tracker. Plural. Two. Nice. Remember, I spent the three weeks or whatever. Actually, hang on. Do I, have two I know that you have more than one. I thought you had three or something, though. No, I, I made three during the elongated rest. I sold one to Seth, and I sold another to Olek. Nice. But before I did that, I used all four of them to go and sell stuff in Journey's End. Nice. You know, I kind of forgot I had a bag of holding. I, I don't even have it on my sheet. Wow, I am... I am kind of out of date. Would I you, think I sold it to you. Would you like a bag of holding sheet? That would probably be a good idea, yes. I'll duplicate mine and go from there. 
Yeah, I had a bag of folding, and you sold me a bag of folding, so I should have two, right? Hang on. I want to make sure that I'm correct on who I gave them to. But yes, you should have two, Isa. Alright, I gave you a thing that you can see, and I will move it into your folder. Bam, there you go. Uh, if you want a little divider to help organize, like, groups of items and stuff like that, there's a little divider line, and it uses a, a weight adjustment and a strength score to tell you when you break the capacity, and you can read the features of the bag of holding from the things on the side. Awesome. Well, Thank we you. have returned. We have returned... And uh, we want everybody to know it's natty or nothing, squatter. Uh, so sorry. All right, come on. So you have uh, you have decided to pay actual money. You have decided to pay actual money. You come back. The fabricator is reads off. So you couldn't find a talking drinking buddy monkey, could you? Not, that we Not could. one that we could convince to come here. Not one that we wouldn't have to compel, and we were not okay with that. That's probably for the best. <laughs> it, it, it says, Joseph says. <laughs> uh, so you're going to be paying money? Yep. Okay. Hand over the orb. All right. You can just, you can just put it on the floor there. So, you put the case down, and he schlorps over it, and uh, partially takes it apart, and then absorbs and consumes the entire thing, as the whole thing seems to just fade away into its body, like, uh, like Thanos snap style. Oh, jeez. And, and then it warbles around a little bit. And then, slowly, case and all, it produces it back out again. And the orb is now multicolored, rainbow prismatic colored, swirling around and everything. And then he spits out uh, another little uh, tablet made of, like, copper or whatever, and engraved in it, it says, there you go, it was a simple fix, nothing really that bad. Awesome. That's Look good. I'm going to spend a little bit of time verifying the integrity of this item. Of this Roll an arcana. <laughs> Roll an arcana. That's perfectly reasonable. Uh, would any tool proficiency apply or just straight arcana? Just a straight arcana here. All right. I will give myself guidance on this as well. Oh, 23 is pretty nice, though. 25. All right. Are you doing a flash of genius yeah, also? Yeah, fla flash of genius at to 30, man. Fuck it. <laughs> Flash of genius up to 30. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell that the entire thing has been reset to factory default and then reprogrammed to have all of the same programming that it had before. Lovely. Oh. Yeah. So it is it is intact and exactly as it was pre, you know. Pre-corruption. And everything. Pre-corruption, yeah. It's 100% nice. square. Uh, as, as for as the... As as an orb should be. As for the machine goddess, however, he can't help you, like, set up the interface or anything like that. Because uh, that's all stuff that was made after he was created. And more importantly, that was all like a private uh, experiment for the university that he was not privy to. I'll have to be doing all the tinkering and wiring, as it were, with the you with will. PC. And that hmm. would be like your tinkers tools. Lovely. We think probably tinkers. Tinkers. Tinkers is weird. Tinkers is weird, but probably tinkers. What? Wait. What? What's uh? What sort of talking about? Oh my god. 10 10 k for 30 seconds of work? Listen, I'm glad you guys have a seven-month oh mission. My god. No, 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 hang on, hang on. You are not paying for 30 seconds of work. You are paying for all of the experience and education he has. And yeah, you're paying, for, you're paying for 200,000 years of education and experience, is what you're doing. Hmm. Like, the work was only 30 seconds, but there was a lot of work before that that he had to get to to be able to do that in 30 seconds. a highly seconds. rare advanced skill. 
Well, you're you're using you're using a creature from two hundred thousand years ago to repair an artifact to repair an artifact. So yeah. Oh, uh, so but you have it. It's completely good. If you want to hook it into the machine goddess, uh, you certainly can. Um, for a price, something along the lines of 2,000 gold, they can get the machine goddess safely back to your city after you leave. Hey, hang on. Uh, Torner, look, um, <laughs> it's a similar thing with spellcasting. You know, you, you it might, is a you very might, similar thing with spellcasting. You spell might be casting. paying, like, a couple hundred gold for a one-action cast spell. You're not paying for the action. <laughs> You're paying for the spell slot and everything that went into him knowing that spell. Yeah. The yeah, spell slots, yeah. the material components. <laughs> the, the wizard's college. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I gotta pay my student loans too. <laughs> all, all those day, no, no, we, we need to break it down into druid, druid terms. All those days spent meditating in fields, you know, getting in tune with nature. We're, we're paying for that. You know, the, the talking of animals, granola, learning all, all the secrets of the flowers. You had to eat all all those, all that granola that you had to eat, all those vegan meat replacements you had to go it through, it's the for same thing. All of those flowers you had to sniff. <laughs> all the, the, all the you had to hug. I get paid in beer. He is a dwarven druid, after all. You tried so, to go the beer. You tried to go the beer route, but you ended up finding out that it was the morally questionable route too. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh geez. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I don't think we'll we'll require assistance transporting it. But can we? Uh, can we leave it here for the time are, being until we? Can are you? Are you bringing it? Say again. So so we we do have the urgency of the war path. So can we can we leave the stuff here safe? until we come back and we can take it to Crypt Canyon ourselves. Are you sure? I mean, I don't see why we can't just have them transport it, because, like... Because that costs money. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, we, can we come back and get it? We love how chintzy you guys are. <laughs> so miserly. Is life worth nothing to you? <laughs> I mean, you saw what we fair, tried to do to a monkey. To be fair, they did just spend a million dollars repairing an orb. <laughs> don't forget all the... Like. You know, the, the, thing, the thing that gets to me is they spent, I don't know, how many thousands of gold for the ship. I don't know how many thousands of gold to get an orb fixed, but then when it goes about transporting that orb for which they paid so much money from that place to the other place, well, then, then it's suddenly too much. It's just it's beautiful. <laughs> It's hilarious, isn't it? It's funny as hell. We love it. Because in our own I was going to say, the, ship the sunk cost fallacy. Let's just put a little more money into this and get it over with. Because the ship was going <gasps> to take too long to make ourselves. And so we need I mean, we've already got a ship, enough. so... Right, but we bought it instead of making one to be able to transport everything here. Well, you can't just take hmm. a ship and bring it back to the front. No, that's going to take, take, take way longer. Yeah, you'll probably just be leaving the ship. Sell the ship. Yeah, we can. Oh my god! Actually, that's not Are a bad you idea. Sell the ship to have them bring the. Oh no, my just, god! It's just... amazing. It that, would work too. That's how. That's how barges were run in like the medieval period. They would make it out of timber. They would put shit on it, sail it down the river with the current. They would sell the shit on the barge, and then they would sell the barge for timber. He, we hate to say it, but he is absolutely right. Barges were a one-time, a one-use thing back in the day. They were a one-direction <laughs> thing. They just went down just the river. A boat. Sell the boat. You're not going to be sailing it back up the river. It's only ever been used once. I could yeah, probably look and up and what it and and actually looks like. <laughs> and and the dwarves don't have much in the way of boats, so they'd like a nice big keel boat. So boats would be in demand. They are in demand. They're just breaking out onto the water, so saves you the Ooh. money to have to you know give to them to to bring that weird orb to the to the valley. Yeah, yeah. We can sell the sell the boat and use that money to you know pay for getting the machine goddess and the orb back to Crypt Canyon while we go back to. Uh, 
get back to the university via another tree. And yeah. All right. Are you guys going to sell your boat? Yeah. If it's any consolation, Aldous, a boat is just a money pit anyway. Uh, you're Unless you're doing right. work with it, like fishing. We need. Oh my god, we can't believe nobody got that one. It's, it's <laughs> just what your. It's just what your old asshole uncle says. Like a boat is just a money pit anyway. I was thinking of a movie. I think that has a similar name. I I was. I had to watch that movie with my family one time. Okay, so uh, last thing that you need to do is you need to hook up the machine goddess. All this. That's you. Yep. Oh boy. That, that's that's 100% you. There's nobody else can do it. Literally nobody else. All right. <laughs> then I will. So uh, this will be your... What kind of tools do you have again? So I got thieves. I got tinkers. I got masons. I got smiths. I got alchemists. And I've got carpenters. Tinkers. You're going around with little wires and shit. Would you... Okay... Yes. All right. I wouldn't practice. Yeah, like that's, so. that's what we thought. Okay, good. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent choice. Um, so you are able to get her set up, and you're able to use the knowledge that you already have of these kind of machines to start her going. And as her eyes light up with life, they are a prismatic color, and you hear her sing. And the song reaches your soul. And she says, Oh, thank you. Thank you. I can think again. I can live again. We're glad to have helped you. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, now she can be pulled off wherever you want. Hmm. We'll get you set up in a nice new safe home. <laughs> nice. She can't walk again, so that's probably best. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, with that, you will get her back to the, um, back to home, and there she will start going to work. You have finished your work here at Mountain Home. You have uh, paid Joseph a shit ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, for the much, record... How much did that boat sell for, by the way? It's half cost, right? So, 1500 back? Uh, it's it's in demand, so we'll say you could just get it away for 2000 Alright. Right. 2000 yeah. against three people that everybody adds 666 gold and... Oh my god. Well, I was gonna say, we're gonna be using the money from the boat to pay for her transport, yeah, which was also 2000 you're oh. using the money for the boat to pay for the goddess's transport. Yeah. Oh, fair I, enough then. I just want to say that you guys gave him 200 pounds of gold. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. I've got a bag of holding. That's, so, that's uh, a lot of gold. <laughs> it is. That's a lot of gold. Yeah. <laughs> I would convert it into platinum if that's how that works. You need, you need somebody who actually has platinum to do that. Yeah, Two, they do. 200, 200 pounds of gold is approximately the same amount that was demanded of the Europeans after some one of the first raids uh, in the Viking era. Mm. 200 pounds of gold for each person in the warband. Oh, jeez. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you see how that stacks up. Good lord. So, uh, yeah, you are free to go back to uh, the place... So well, we'll have spend... to wait a day because you know we've already spent both our transport via plants, you know, getting to Crypt Canyon real quick to get some money, and then coming back. Okay, two seconds. So we spent two days, then we wait for the third, and we come back on the morning of the fourth. Yeah, one more. We're yeah. actually counting it. And, and we did pay our uh, boat guy, you know, for four days. And we're, we'll be bringing more. him back with us, of course, if he wants. And I believe I believe Adam paid him the money from his from his. So Me. three, four, five, six. So uh, putting the two thousand from selling the boat straight into transporting is a that, that's pretty good. Me. Yeah. 
Yeah, economic no, you're, just spending, you're just spending transport for transport at the point. It's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you go on back. Calden, you have had four days. Okay. Yup. Unfortunately, I ran with spell scrolls after 14 hours. <laughs> after 14 hours, you yeah. got bored. Now you can start making more. <laughs> Just, you know, as we said, this is, like, your downtime is, like, yeah. your favorite thing we know. So, like, just so you know, you have four days of downtime. Uh, Olek, same thing for you. We know downtime isn't nearly as important to you, but feel free to use it as you so desire. Um, yes. well, probably because uh, I bought all kinds of stuff. Probably just made more alcohol and tried to sell it to the people there. <laughs> And or more steel. Yeah, <laughs> steel, selling steel. <laughs> hey, okay. Now, how much How much would that have gotten me, though? Uh, we'll have to do the math at some point, but a lot. A lot. I, like... I'm gonna make a scroll of gentle repose. So That's can, not a bad idea. So gentle st- repose has shown itself repeatedly in this campaign to be use- a useful spell to you. To you in particular, called in. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But that way, I can stop preparing it. Four days later, a booming economy of steel. Uh, Is this in the crop document? Is that where we put it? No, it isn't. No, the question is, what do I want to take instead? <laughs> Moon girl, go lay down now. Go. Go on. Go to bed. She's just being so demanding. She's actually pushing our hand aside whenever we uh, try to reach for the uh, the mouse. Is there any <laughs> chance that Oleg would have been able to sell it to the people there? And just getting the gold without giving it to, you know, the other ones. Roll a stealth. All right. With... No, just roll a stealth. Just a flat stealth. Flat stealth. All right, so flat I'll roll stealth. 37. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you can Psy Bolstered Knack. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. What was yeah, Even at a 1, again? though, that's a 14. Cybolster Dak uses your psionic energy dice. You can use it when you fail a stealth check to improve it by the amount rolled. Okay, let's see. What would that be? Where's the psionic dice? Uh, I think uh, I got a button somewhere on the left or the middle side. That 19. Oh, wow. Uh, so you're... St- Holy shit, Olek! What? <laughs> and I How are you still what? like such a badass? And not that it's gonna matter, but you probably do expend the die here. He did it work? Yes. <laughs> yes, it definitely worked. You you are able to set up a, a quick operation on the riverside with uh with some enterprising young blacksmiths that haven't haven't learned their way and earned their way into the mithril trade yet. Nice. Exactly your kind of people, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so who's he selling to? The people of the university? The the Ravatars, yes. Gotcha. And we will find you the exact numbers on uh <clears throat> just how how much money you can get here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, from this side operation uh, in the in the break, pretty much Perfect. immediately after we're done with that. Awesome. So uh, yeah, anybody want to do anything before the big break for Christmas? Say anything. Um, do anything. Um. Oh uh, no, I, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing comes to mind. All right. Yeah, well, we think good. we're gonna. We think we're going to call it there, then. Thanks a bunch, everybody, for coming. Everybody, feel free to say goodbye. 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 Hopefully, Bye. I, don't, hopefully I don't get sick over Christmas again. That'd be great. Well, we're, <laughs> we're, probably, we're probably not going to come back until, like, the new year anyway, so that's fine. <laughs>